Greetings everyone, we are the group 2 representing you geological hazards. Me and my team joined together just to represent you guys what is the geological hazard. Introducing my group mates, Dimakaling, Cortez, Torrejos, Halili, Bal, Morcillo, Serati, and me, Agravante, to show you about geological hazards. To sum up, these are the following. What is geological hazard? Four types of geological hazard, areas that are prone to disaster, practical ways in coping, and advice to avoid this. So let's begin. A geological hazard is one of the several types of adverse geologic conditions capable of causing damage or loss of property and life. These hazards consist of sudden phenomena and snow phenomena. Sudden phenomena include avalanches, earthquakes, forest fires, geomagnetic storms, and volcanic eruptions, lahars, and ash storms. Gradual or slow phenomena include alluvian falls, caldera, glacier deposits, ground subsidence, sands and sinkholes, sand dune migration, shoreline and stream erosion, and thermal springs. Sometimes, the hazard is instigated by man to the careless location of developments or construction in which the conditions were not taken into account. So there's um, four types of geological disaster that we often hear a lot on news TV and our radio. Examples of this are earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, and landslides. Earthquakes mostly caused by a sudden slip on a fault. When the stress on the edge overcomes the frictions, there is an um, earthquake energy that releases in the waves that travels through the Earth's crust and caused by shaking that you feel. Tsunamis are also caused by an earthquake. Remember the tsunami in Japan? In 2011, that is one of the biggest tsunami news in history. In fact, Japan is prone in tsunamis and other calamities. Volcanic eruption is caused by when the molten rock cold magma rises to the surface. The largest eruption here in the Philippines is in 1991 when Mount Pinatubo erupted bursts of gas charge. Magma exploded into umbrella ash clouds. Hot flows of gas and ash descended the volcano's flanks and lahar swept down valleys. Many lost lives because of it. On the other hand, the slider caused by disturbance of natural stability of slope. They can accompany heavy rains or fallow droughts, earthquakes, or volcanic eruptions. Mass light develop when the water rapidly accumulates in the ground and results in a surge of water-saturated rock, earth, and debris. And that is the geological disaster that we often knew. I'm giving the floor to Francil Torejos. Thank you for that, Empress. And now, I'm Francil Torejos, and today we're going to talk about how to describe and identify a risk that are prone to geological hazards. So based on our research, these are some places in Earth that are prone to these disasters. So the first one is Tonga. Tonga is a country uh, in Oceania and it is prone to geological hazards because due to its location and topographic nature, Tonga is vulnerable to a number of natural disasters, earthquakes, tsunamis, tropical cyclones, and droughts are constituted the main place. place is the Costa Rica. Costa Rica is a country in Central America. It is also prone to geological hazards in a recent act. There are several nature hazards exposed to Costa Rica, which themselves are affected by various widespread climatic phenomena such as El Nino or South Oscillation. The third one is the Philippines, which is our country. So it is a country in Asia and it also prone to geological hazards as we can see that there have not been an endless number of fatal typhoons, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions and other natural disasters um, came in the Philippines. The top and bottom picture again, you can see the three spots in the uh, Philippines, the Banawi Rice Terraces, and also uh, beaches in Coron Palawan. These are the few examples of natural disaster events happened in Philippine history. 
as you can see here, the first release is the Bohol Earthquake happened on October 2013. It took so many lives, people and people living in Bohol, and also it destroyed so many establishments and churches in Bohol. So the second one is the Typhoon Bufa. Typhoon Bufa made landfall in the evening of December 2012 on Mindanao in the Philippine region. And the next one is the Pantukan landslide happened on January 2012 and occurred on about 3 a.m. on Thursday morning in Pantukan, Compostela Valley province on Mindanao Island. So the next one is the tropical storm. In December 2011, the world's second most deadly disaster of the year, tropical storm washing known as Sendong in the Philippines, landed along the east coast of Mindanao Philippines, causing 1,292 deaths and 1,049 missing, 2,002 injured, and the total of 695,195 people or 110,806 families affected. So the next one is the Typhoon Pension. Typhoon Pension happened on June 2008 and the most affected areas were Iloilo, Capiz, Aklan, Antique in Panay Island, as well as Leyte, Samar in Region 8. The last one either is the Cyclone Dorian. Cyclone Dorian happened on November 26, which its peak strength with 10 minutes sustained winds and 195 km per hour. It landed it landed on the northern Philippine islands on Luzon, suffered yet another direct hit from Super Typhoon this season with Super Typhoon Durian, known as Remy the Pool. It's important for us to know disaster risk because it helps us identify and map local capacities to cope with these hazards. It also ensures that our emergency response does no harm by replacing replacing and reinstancing critical vulnerability. So that's all. And for our next reporter, we give the floor to Luigi Haldi. Thank you, Francine. Wow, it is really hard to know that our country experienced such things. Probably our nature exchanges due to the calamity. That's why we have to be aware to have a great knowledge about the serious geological hazards. Based in my research, these are the following ways in order to cope up. Check yourself for injuries. Help injured or trapped person if you can. Be prepared for aftershocks. Clean up spilled medicine, bleaches, and gasoline immediately. Open cabinet doors cautiously. Listen to the radio or television for more information from authorities. Stay out of damaged buildings. Listen to the radio forecast to be informed on when is the safest time to leave the house to avoid being caught by aftershocks. And that's all. These are just some of the ways to cope up. Challenge Rate will give you an advice. Yes, Luigi. My biggest advice towards those who knew that their areas are prone to disaster is regulation. In this way, we can at least reduce the case of damage and can even save lives and for others make sure to be aware of what to do what to face and what to gain knowledge in such disaster wow we might not know what are the possibilities that would happen in us when we are experiencing geological hazards like calamities and all that stuff so it's really best to be aware on what we should do during these calamities and i really hope that you understand our presentation today once again, we are the group 2, presenting you Geological Hazard. Thank you for tuning with us.